everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I have a pretty exciting video for you guys today. I'm going to be showing you my entire handmade wardrobe. So over the past year or so, I've really gotten back into sewing. Um, I used to sew a lot when I was in school and I actually took lessons outside of school when I was younger. And when I was growing up, my mom did a lot of sewing as well, so she was always making our Halloween costumes and also making some clothes for us. But I kind of fell out of the habit for a little bit and then just over the past year or so picked it back up again. And especially during this pandemic and being at home a lot and during quarantine, I've been sewing a lot. Um, so as you can see, I have a lot of pieces here. Some of them are kind of fails, um, especially when I was just starting out. Um, a lot of them didn't work out quite the way I wanted to and don't fit perfectly, um, but that's fine. It's all part of the process. And sewing itself is just kind of a hobby for me and something that I really enjoy um, and that I find relaxing and rewarding. So I wanted to show you all of the clothes that I've made over the past year or so in this video and also do a little bit of a mini review on each one. Um, and let you know kind of what fabric I used and what pattern I used. Um, and yeah, just hopefully this will give you a little bit of inspiration if you are a sewer and you're looking to find different patterns to try or wondering how things fit or how they look when they're finished. And if you're not a sewer, then maybe this will inspire you to give it a try. So I'm gonna go through each and every piece that I have here and tell you a little bit about it. I'll also be doing a cutaway to show you how it looks when I'm wearing it. Um, and I will be linking all of the information for everything down in the description box below, um, including the patterns and where I get my fabric. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So the first item that I made when I started sewing again was this little tank top, um, and this is the Essential Linen Tank Pattern from fabricstore.com. Um, and I just made it out of this simple white linen, which I think is from Earth Indigo Fabrics, which is a Canadian sustainable fabric supplier. And it's definitely not perfect. I don't know if you can see from there, but I'll do a close-up um, of the stitching. I think the tension on my machine was completely wrong because there's so many loops, like the stitching is just all loopy. But it's actually fine. I don't <laughs> really mind it. You know, it was a learning process. And it was my first time doing a bias binding for the neckline and the armholes, and I was a little bit confused. Um, but I actually do get a ton of wear out of this and um, it's a great piece for layering under cardigans or sweaters or just on its own in the summer. Um, it's just a very crisp, essential white linen tank top. Um, so it's definitely a classic and something that I'm going to continue wearing for years to come. And since then I've also made a couple more. So this is one more in an oatmeal linen and this linen I think is from Fabric Store as well. And I have a dress that I made um, out of this fabric as well, so I'll show that to you a little bit later. Um, but yeah, it's just a very nice kind of oversized boxy fit tank um, and works well for pretty much any season. And yeah, this is just a really great basic piece to have in my wardrobe, like I said, for layering. Um, and so I wanted to make a couple of them just to have. So next I have this kind of three-quarter length sleeve tee, um, and this is the Grainline Studio Hemlock Tee Pattern, um, which is typically meant for knit fabrics or fabrics with a little bit of stretch to them. I used some leftover heavyweight linen, which I actually had already used to make some pillow covers for my bed, which I showed in another video if you want to see that. I'll link it down below. Um, so I just had some leftover fabric and just kind of wanted to make something out of it and chose to do the hemlock tee. And it actually worked pretty well um, with just a heavyweight linen, but the only thing is the neckline. So as you can kind of see, it not really puckers, but it just kind of hangs open a little bit. And that's because I couldn't stretch the neckline binding while I was sewing, um, which is what you're supposed to do with a stretch knit fabric as you're sewing this one so that it will lay flat. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have done a more bias binding where I flip it to the inside and so it's not showing. Um, it would have given it a little bit of a wider kind of boat neck, but I don't think I would have minded that. Um, but anyway, it still kind of works and it's a very comfortable shirt and I love the color. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I don't necessarily consider this a fail, but it was definitely a little bit of an experiment and next time I think there will definitely be things I do differently. So now moving on to some pants. Um, these were the first pants that I made when I started sewing again. Um, I think I posted these to Instagram, um, which by the way, if you guys do follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen a lot of these before. And if you're not following me, then I definitely invite you to come join me over there because every time I do sew something, 
Um, I typically post it over there and do a little bit of a mini review as well. These are the crisp linen pant from fabricstore.com. And I should also say when I started sewing, I started sewing a lot with fabricstore.com patterns. Um, so if you don't know them, I'll link them down below. Um, but they have an entire library full of free patterns, which are typically um, quite simple, beginner friendly, and meant for linen fabric, which they sell on their website. And they also have a glossary of different sewing techniques, um, so it helps you learn. Um, so when I started sewing, um, I just grabbed some free patterns. I didn't want to invest too much money in the beginning when I was just kind of testing things out and didn't exactly know 100% um, what I was doing. Um, and I found their patterns were a great way to learn, and also um, a lot of them turned out really well even though I was kind of a beginner again. Um, so these are the crisp linen pant. Um, they have a waistline, which was honestly so tedious to do, just because there are three elastics in the waistline. Um, so you sew a waistline casing with three different sections for the elastics, and then you thread through three different elastics. And by the time you've done the second elastic and it's all bunched up and you're trying to thread it through again, um, and I was just using a very small safety pin as well. Um, I didn't have a proper bodkin at the time, which is a tool that you use to thread elastic through casing, um, which now I do, probably because of how difficult this was, I finally picked one up. Um, but anyway, I also learned how to do a French seam on these pants, um, which is a way of finishing your seam so that there's no raw edge. Um, and also learned how to do pockets in pants. Um, on a French seam. I learned a lot of good techniques um, making these pants and I think they turned out quite well. They're definitely a bit more of an oversized fit, um, which the pattern does say they're meant to be oversized, but I think with a lot of fabric store patterns what happens for me is they end up getting printed just a slightly larger. Um, so when you're printing patterns at home typically there will be a front page with a little square which you're supposed to print as a test page first and measure the square to make sure that your pattern is going to be to the proper scale. And I don't have a printer at home so I always go to the copy shop to print them where I can't actually really do much about the sizing. Um, I always just print it at 100% and kind of hope it works out for the best. <laughs> So with these ones, um, when I print them, they are just slightly larger, so I did go for, I think, the smaller size in this one, um, but they are quite baggy and loose throughout the legs, which you'll see in the try-on. But I really like them. They're in a black linen, which I think was from Earth Indigo Fabrics. I can't quite remember. But yeah, I think that these were a pretty good run for my first pair of trousers um, since high school. So I was quite happy with these and quite proud of them and after having done these and kind of learning the techniques that I did, um, I think it really encouraged me and motivated me to do a lot more sewing just because um, these worked out so well. So if you're looking for some beginner patterns to try, definitely look at Fabric Store. Um, as I mentioned, the Essential Linen Tank is a great one, um, which I started with, as well as the Crisp Linen Pants. Um, and that would make a really cute outfit. Um, you could do like a matching set or you could do a different color top and pants and it's a great beginner project to get you into sewing and to learn a few um, important techniques that are going to help you later on. And I did end up making the crisp linen pant in another color as well. And these are a beige linen which is from Earth Indigo Fabrics but it's a little bit of a lighter weight. And yeah, so they just look like this. Again, they're quite oversized. I think with these ones I did try to take the sizing in. Um, and I forgot to mention with the black ones, actually, after I had cut the pattern and kind of, I think, sewed the inseam, um, I did cut them quite a bit and try to take them in as I was sewing because they were so big. Um, but they ended up working out, and yeah, I just thought it was good to practice again, try them in another color. So that's that pair. Next is a pair of, um, I think they're called the Palisade Pants by Paper Cut Patterns. And these are in a organic um, cotton canvas in kind of a natural color um, and I think this is from Earth Indigo Fabrics again um, and what I was trying to go for these was kind of an Elizabeth Suzanne Clyde pant um, and I made these before those patterns were made available temporarily. I'm not 100% sure I like how these ones turned out. Um, I liked the pocket detail and I loved the way that they were finished. Um, I was really impressed with the pattern for that. I did end up having to use two elastics, which was not part of the pattern. Um, they wanted you to use one elastic, but I didn't have an elastic that was thick enough, so I just did kind of the same thing 
that I learned from the crisp linen pant and just sewed a row of stitching um, in the middle of the casing so that I could insert two elastics instead of just one. Um, but it does have a flat um, waistband on the front, which is kind of a nice detail. And yeah, the pockets are really cool as well. So they're kind of this asymmetrical bag pocket, um, which is very neat. Um, and I think with these ones, what I might end up doing is tapering them a little bit. I think what might be throwing me off with the fit is just that they're a little bit too long. Um, so I might give that a try, but I just haven't had time to go back to them just yet. Um, but overall, I think this was my first paper cut patterns pattern, and I really enjoyed it, like I said, and thought that the finishing um, and the attention to detail in the pattern was very good. So Okay, so next I have a couple pairs of the Anna Allen Pomona pants. And so I have one pair here, which is in this nice brown color, and I'm also wearing another pair, which is in more of a natural, like, oatmeal color. And both of these fabrics are from Blackbird Fabrics, and um, it is their washed linen. And I was inspired by one of my friends on Instagram, um, Joan, who, if you're not following, definitely go follow her. She does some really great capsule wardrobe inspiration and flat lays, and I just love her style, and she's also just such a sweetheart. Um, but she ended up making a pair of these pants, um, and we were kind of talking back and forth about them, and so I got really inspired by her to make a pair of my own. And I'm so glad that I did because they're amazing. Um, they're so comfortable, and I think that's in part due to the linen I used. Um, the washed linen is just very soft and has a really nice flow and drape to it. Um, so these definitely feel more like pajamas than pants to me, um, and I am guilty of having taken a couple naps in them. So yeah, I made the oatmeal color, which I'm wearing first, and then I went on to make the brown color, and I followed the instructions um, pretty much to a T with these ones. Um, I did the one pocket on the back, on the right side for both of them, and yeah, I thought that the pattern was great. It was actually a slightly different way of doing pants than I have been used to in the past, so each leg is one piece instead of two. So you actually don't do a side seam down the outer um, side of the leg. Um, you're only doing um, the inseam and then a crotch seam. Um, so it was an interesting technique to learn and I definitely enjoyed making them this way. I thought it was really nice and easy. Um, um, and yeah, I would definitely recommend these patterns. Um, since I've made these, I'm also looking to make a pair of her Persephone pants which look a little bit more involved and a little bit crazy, but I think at this point I'm kind of ready to take on the challenge. Um, so I have that pattern waiting and I've got some fabric on order and I'm excited to make it. Um, but definitely take a look at her patterns if you're interested in some really good, um, comfortable, beginner-friendly patterns. Um, I think these are absolutely great and would definitely recommend them. Um, so next I have this little linen set that I made. Um, again, this is the Essential Linen Tank from Fabric Store, so nothing really new here. Um, the only thing that I did differently with this one is I cropped it a little bit more than the pattern. Um, so normally it's a bit longer, but for this one, just because it was part of a set, I thought it would look a little bit cuter if it was um, just cropped a little bit. And I can still wear this on its own with a pair of more like high-waisted pants or a denim, um, which is my typical style anyway. And then these, to go with them, are a pair of the Anna Ellen Pomona shorts. So same as the pants, um, just the shorts version. So they do have the two pockets on the front. Um, the only alteration I made to this one was for the waistband. Um, I didn't have a thick enough elastic again. I think I just had a one inch elastic. Um, so for the casing, I just stitched a row of stitching and left it um, at the top. So it kind of adds this cute little frill detail to the top. And yeah, these are super cute. Um, I'm not a super huge shorts person. I don't wear them pretty much outside of summer, um, but this set together is just so adorable um, and I love how it turned out. And it's also using washed linen in the color olive from Blackbird Fabrics. So next I have one skirt. Um, this was also a free pattern um, from Peppermint Magazine. So if you guys are looking for some other free patterns, Peppermint Magazine has a really great collection um, of free patterns and they do them in collaboration with independent pattern makers. Um, so I can't actually remember the pattern maker who made this pattern in collaboration with them, um, but I will link it down below. Um, so it's just a typical black linen wrap skirt and it has a really nice and long um, waist tie um, and there's a little opening for the tie to go through as well around the waist. And yeah, it's just kind of a midi length skirt. I think for the pattern for this one, I did crop it a little bit. It's actually supposed to be um, a little bit longer 
um, but I wanted the hem to hit around my knee and I'm quite tall so I did shorten this one a little bit. Um, the only thing I wish is that I had added pockets because I'm just looking at it now and there's no pockets. Um, and I'm someone who really enjoys pockets so um, something to know for next time for sure. Um, but really like this pattern and if you're looking for a good skirt pattern, I would definitely recommend this one. Okay, so now getting into some dresses. So this is the Bellbird Wrap Dress by Common Stitch. Um, and this is a beautiful piece. I actually did a review on my blog of this pattern. If you want to go take a look at that, I'll link it below. And I made it using some white linen from fabricstore.com. Um, it's a little bit sheer, but I actually quite like that for this piece, um, just because this is kind of an easy sort of summer like throw on dress and it's great for taking to the beach or it's something I would definitely wear on vacation. And yeah, I really enjoyed the pattern. The only thing um, that I would say I had an issue with was kind of the front area. Um, so I did a size 12, I believe in this, um, a size like Australian 12 because it's an Australian pattern company. I'm not sure if it's because I sized up or if this is an issue with all of the patterns, but the front area here does kind of hang open a little bit when you're wearing it. So I had to kind of adjust the placement of the opening for the waist tie, which goes through one side. But I also find that as I started wearing it and it kind of settled onto my body and kind of like draped, then the issue would sort of go away because the fabric would sort of weigh down, um, if that makes sense. Um, you'll be able to see a little bit more in the try on, I think. But yeah, overall, I think this is a really beautiful dress and definitely something that I get a lot of wear out of in the warmer months and I wore a lot in the summer. This one also gets the award for the longest bias tape binding ever <laughs> because you actually do a bias binding on the entire front. So up one side of the wrap dress, around the neck, and then back down the other side. And it's one continuous piece of bias. And when I was cutting the bias out, I actually didn't follow the pattern. I cut it quite a bit longer just because with patterns, um, I always find when... You have a bias binding, a lot of times they don't fit 100% properly and you're left with just a little bit shorter than you need. Um, and it's so tedious because bias binding is super costly to cut out um, in that you have to cut it on the bias so you're wasting a lot of fabric. With this one actually I didn't cut it on the bias, I just cut it straight just to save fabric. I just couldn't do it, it was just too much. Um, and I think it worked out fine. So, um, But anyway that's kind of a tip for you if you ever have a pattern where there is a bias binding um, just cut it a teensy bit longer. You can always shorten it afterwards, um, but that's just something that's really helped me before so that I don't have to cut it again or try to stretch it as I'm sewing and get some weird like puckering going on. Okay, and I have um, just a couple more shirts to show you actually before we continue with the dresses. So um, both this shirt and the shirt that I'm wearing now are the Augustina tee um, from fabricstore.com. So again, it's a free pattern. So this is a nice kind of oversized boxy fit tee and it looks a lot like the Elizabeth Suzanne Georgia tee, um, which I was kind of going for, although those patterns did become available um, for a short period, so you could actually make the Georgia tee instead if you want to. Um, so this one again has a bias binding on the neck and then it also has um, these little sleeve cuffs. And when I was sewing both of these, I had a lot of trouble with the sleeve cuffs um, and matching them perfectly. So there's actually a little bit of, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of puckering. Um, just kind of in the little armpit, which when you're wearing, you can't really see it anyway. Like you can see on here, it's not really that noticeable. But that was kind of my only issue with the pattern. Otherwise, I think it worked really well. This pink one is a washed linen from Blackbird Fabrics again. And this white one, I believe, is the same fabric that I used for the Bellbird wrap dress. So just a white linen from Fabric Store. Um, and then I did make it into a dress as well. So um, the pattern is just for a t-shirt, but I ended up just extending it. I think I extended it by 18 inches on the bottom um, and made it into a tee dress. Um, just because I couldn't decide with this fabric, this pink color, whether I wanted to do a shirt or a dress and I ended up absolutely squeezing it out of two meters of fabric um, that I had ordered. Um, and by the time I was making the pattern, the fabric was no longer available, so I couldn't have gotten any more. Um, so I almost didn't actually have enough fabric to make both of these, but I just got really creative and made it work. Um, and I also managed to squeeze out some pockets for the dress as well. Um, and both of these are just super comfortable. I love the color. And yeah, this pattern is just, again, a great basic for any wardrobe. If you're looking to make a tee, um, I would definitely recommend it, and it works beautifully with linen. 
Okay, so back to dresses. This is the gathered tie-back dress from fabricstore.com, so another free pattern. And I made this using some of their oatmeal linen. And I was so happy with how this one turned out. I did make a couple adjustments, so the pattern calls for actually a tie-back. So what you do is you take the bias binding around the neck and then you just extend it so that at the back you can kind of tie it. Um, and I didn't really want that, I just wanted to do a button, so I looked up on their blog um, in their glossary how to do kind of this button closure. Um, so it looks like this, there's just a little loop of fabric which goes around a button and just secures it at the back. Um, and I was really happy with how that turned out. Um, and I also did little button detail on the sleeves as well. Um, the instructions for which I found in their glossary again. So just made a couple small adjustments to this pattern um, and absolutely loved how it turned out. Um, it's definitely very like prairie chic, um, but yeah, it's just super comfortable and just a really beautiful, um, natural kind of organic looking dress. And I would say that this dress is um, maybe beginner to intermediate friendly, especially with kind of the little alterations that I made. Um, you learn how to do kind of a gathered waistline the hardest part probably was this, um, the neck opening, because you have to do a facing and then flip it. Um, and it did pucker a little bit at the bottom, but it's not super noticeable. So yeah, I definitely learned a few good techniques in this, and I think um, at this point, by the time I sewed this, my skills were definitely starting to improve, um, and I think it turned out really well. Okay, so this dress is um, another pattern from Peppermint Magazine, and it's their everyday dress. And I actually made this in collaboration with Fabric Store, so they sent me this fabric um, to make a pattern out of, and I was able to choose a pattern of my choice. Um, and then they actually wrote a blog post about it, so if you're interested, um, I will link that for you down below. But yeah, this is just kind of a throw-on, really boxy, oversized dress, and it does come with a waist tie in case you want to cinch it up the waist. Um, I'm a little bit sad with this one because I think I should have sized down. I made a size medium. Just for context, I'm normally between a US size 6 or 8, so so I think I made the medium in this one and it just ended up a little bit too big. But I always find it so hard to tell, um, especially when I was starting how to size my patterns properly. I've since learned to definitely look at the finished garment sizes and measure your body and just see how it works. Um, but when you're trying to kind of tailor it on the fly, that's still something that I struggle with. Um, that said, it is very comfortable and the linen itself is beautiful. Um, and yeah, it has a really nice um, v-neck detail which you do with a facing. And then some pockets which are essential in a dress for me. And then some slits up the side as well. And a nice free pattern if you're looking for a dress to try and try out some new techniques. So this one is my last dress, and this is a Chris Wood Sews envelope dress. So this pattern is really unique in that you basically just cut out um, three big rectangles of fabric and stitch them all together and you end up with a beautiful dress that has this nice draped front detail. And I also did a waist tie for this one as well, which isn't part of the pattern, but I just had some extra fabric. So this fabric is a heavyweight linen from fabricstore.com, and I had originally purchased it to make pillow covers, um, but I ended up making the pillow covers for my bed with the dark emerald green fabric, which I showed you earlier. So I had this one kind of sitting, and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And so I thought I would try the Chris Woodsow's envelope dress just to use all of the fabric and have no waste. Um, and I really love how it turned out. I love the color. The only thing is that this is quite a heavyweight um, linen, so I did purchase it for doing some upholstery. And with the Chris Woodsow's envelope dress in particular, um, the way that it's made, so the neck kind of hangs a little bit, um, so the dress actually gets pulled up a little bit um, to account for the back of your neck, if that makes sense. Um, and just because it is such a heavy fabric, I do find it pulls a little bit on the back of my neck and it isn't 100% comfortable. Um, however, that said, I did make this dress a bit longer than the pattern called for, um, just because I accidentally cut it the wrong direction. <laughs> um, so instead of cutting the width of the fabric as the length, I was cutting um, a bit longer than the width of, a th of the fabric for the length. Um, and it ended up being quite a long dress, so it looks very like Grecian kind of. Um, it's definitely a maxi style dress. And to reduce some of the weight, I definitely could hem it, um, and then it wouldn't be dragging and pulling so much on the back of my neck. But overall, definitely love this pattern and would recommend it. Um, when I picked up this pattern, she was donating the profits to Black Lives Matter, so 
Um, that was really great. And I also made the same pattern again, but tried it in a shirt version. Um, and this one is just using a black linen, which I think is the same black linen as my crisp linen pants from Fabric Store, so I had a little bit left over and thought, why not try making it into a shirt? So this one turned out quite cute. With the draping in the front, I think for a shirt, it looks a little bit funny just because it doesn't have enough fabric to um, drape properly, if that makes sense. It kind of sticks out a little bit in the front, which you might see in the try-on. But yeah, overall I think this is quite a cute little like basic linen tee. The way that I did this one is I basically just chopped the pattern in half. So instead of having the full length of a dress, I just cut the two rectangles in half and used one for the front and one for the back. Um, so definitely very easy to throw together and a nice cute little pattern that's really easy to whip up if you've got some time or are looking to try something new or just have a square or rectangle of fabric and you're not really sure what to do with it and you want to do something that's not going to waste any fabric. Okay, so next I have a pair of overalls and I actually did a video on how I made these so I'll link that in the description box below if you want to go have a watch. Um, but this is the first and I believe only pattern as of yet that I have self-drafted. So I actually made the pattern by tracing a pair of denim overalls that I have um, and it actually turned out really cute. I used this um, dead stock linen from Matchpoint Fabrics in this kind of grayish color. And yeah, I was actually impressed with myself for how this turned out. I wasn't expecting it to turn out this well. The only thing is on the side, so to finish the side seams, I just surged and then flipped it inside and stitched it down. Um, and they do kind of stick up a little bit. I added a second row of stitching to see if that would kind of help, but not really, so it just kind of hangs open. Um, but not a super big deal. And also when I first made them, I had made the straps um, connected, so they were actually stitched to the front here. Um, but the only problem was with overalls, obviously the reason why the straps are detachable is so that you can get it up over your hips and put it on, but then it doesn't hang too low. So I had given myself enough space to get this up over my hips, but then when it was on my body it was hanging way too low. Um, so what I ended up doing is cutting the straps out and finishing the front and then just adding a little buttonhole to the front and then um, just finishing the edges of the straps and threading them through to have a little knot tie to keep it closed. Um, and then it's adjustable. So yeah, I was pretty pleased with how these turned out um, for my first self-made pattern. Even though I did trace it from something else, I still consider this something that I drafted myself. Um, and these are just super comfortable to throw on over a little tee or a sweater and just kind of hang around in at home. Okay, we're getting close to the finish line now. <laughs> So next I have my Wixton jacket, um, and I made this using a organic cotton canvas, um, which I believe is the same one as I used for my Palisade pants, so I had a little bit of that um, left over. Um, and the interior I think is just like a cotton muslin. Um, I actually wasn't sure what to use for the lining, so I just picked up something that I thought would work. Um, I think in the future I would use something just like a printed cotton, I think that would be really fun. Um, but it was my first time doing this pattern, so... And I can't remember, I think I made a small in this one, based on the measurements, and it actually still ended up quite oversized. Um, so it is a very oversized pattern, um, and I would definitely size down the next time to the smallest size. And this is the long version as well, but I really enjoy this pattern. Um, I think it's a super popular one, obviously a lot of people have made it, um, and it's just a beautiful everyday jacket that looks um, so nice in like a linen or in a cotton canvas like this. I've definitely seen some really beautiful ones on Instagram, so look up the hashtag um, if you're interested in getting some inspiration for this piece. Um, I also made another one after this to try and make kind of a coat again. Um, so this is in a boiled wool fabric from simplifyfabric.ca, so it's another Canadian fabric supplier. And yeah, this one definitely turned out better than I expected, so I lengthened the long pattern quite a bit. I did no lining on the inside, so it's just the um, wrong side of the fabric on the inside. The only thing I wish I had maybe done with this is just done half of the collar, so instead of having it roll over. It looks really nice at the top, but then at the bottom I just cannot get it to stay kind of open, um, so it just kind of lays like that. And it still looks nice, but it's just something that I think in hindsight I might have changed. Um, it has nice big pockets, which I did do a lining for the pockets, I just used some leftover um, black linen. Um, and again, this is quite oversized. I think for this one I did do the extra small, um, but it's still just such an oversized piece, um, which I actually like for this kind of coat cardigan style. 
Um, it's really easy to just throw on over a long sleeve top. And yeah, I definitely get a lot of wear out of this in the cooler months and I'm very excited to include this in my wardrobe for fall. So along the same lines, I have another cardigan. This one is from fabricstore.com and it is, I think, the Emma pattern. I can't actually 100% remember the name of it, but I will link it below. And this was using some fabric that I had ordered, I think from Earth Indigo Fabric. I just ordered one of their scrap bundles, so I thought I would use it to test out this pattern. Um, and it's very similar to the Wixton jacket. This one's a little bit smaller, um, and it's a little bit of a shorter version. But I really liked how this one was done. I loved how the collar was done, um, and I really liked how they attached the pockets. And yeah, this was also kind of one of the earlier projects that I made, and it actually still turned out quite well considering I was kind of beginning again. So if you're looking to make something like this, but aren't sure if you want to invest in the Wixton pattern, or you just want to try something similar as a beginner and just kind of get familiar with how to assemble um, a piece like this then definitely would recommend um, trying this pattern as it is a free one um, and then you can kind of learn some of the techniques and carry that on to other projects in the future. And now for the final cardigan. Um, this is actually a piece I knit myself and this is one of my first knitting projects ever. <laughs> I think when I was younger I did like a little bit of knitting just because my mom is a really big knitter so I would kind of try doing like some scarves and more easy stuff like that. Um, but before doing this one I had just done a blanket and I think that's it. So this one is the adult v-neck cardigan by, by Karen Wool I think and I got this as a free pattern from Yarn Canada or was it on Yarn Canada? I can't remember where I got the pattern from, I'll link it below. Um, but the yarn is definitely from Yarn Canada, and the yarn, I think, is from a brand called Lentlopi. It's Icelandic, and I'm probably butchering how to say that. But yeah, just a really beautiful, kind of off-white colored wool. So yeah, it's just a nice little button-up cardigan, and it has some raglan sleeves. So you stitch the front two sides separately, the sleeves separately, and then the back, and then you just assemble it all and then add this kind of button band around the whole thing. Um, and this was definitely a project. So I did a video on making this one as well, which gives you a little bit of insight into kind of how long this takes. Um, but I think this took me several months to finally complete. It was just a lot of stocking stitch. <laughs> But I was super pleased with how this turned out. I think it's super cute and I'm actually quite proud of myself for being able to knit something just because although I have a little bit of experience in sewing, I had pretty much next to no experience in knitting. So this was definitely um, an intimidating project to take on, but my mom helped me a lot. I sent her definitely a lot of messages asking for help and tips. Um, and how to get through things and she really helped me decipher the pattern and gave me a lot of tips. Um, so I definitely couldn't have done this without her. But yeah, if you're into making and you enjoy making your own clothes and you enjoy sewing but you haven't tried knitting, then maybe this will inspire you to give it a try. Okay, so on to some pajamas. So this is a pair of linen pajamas that I made and I based this off of the Devon pajamas, which is a free pattern on fabricstore.com. Although instead of making full length pants, I made a little pair of boxer shorts that look like this. Um, with a little button fly. Um, and this turned out okay. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more oversized, like the Deji Studio Pajamas, um, which is a brand in Australia that does these really beautiful kind of oversized linen pajamas. So I tried to hack the pattern with this one a little bit. I don't think I quite got there, um, but it actually still turned out quite well. And this was my first time attempting a notched collar, and it definitely wasn't easy. I definitely had some difficulty with it, so there is some puckering um, in the notches. Um, it's a really difficult technique, but the fabric store pattern that I followed did explain it quite well. I think it's just you have to try it a couple times to get the hang of it. Um, but yeah, other than that, super cute pattern, and I always enjoy trying out new techniques, so this one was interesting for me, and I do get wear out of these, like I said, in the summer months um, as pajamas. So Okay, and last but not least, I have this um, bathrobe. So this is using some French blue linen, which I had ordered um, a while ago from Earth Indigo and just kind of had sitting in my stack. And I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I ended up finding this robe pattern um, from fabricstore.com. And this was one of their patterns, which you actually don't go and print out, but they give you the instructions for how to draft the pattern yourself. So all of the measurements and everything. Um, so I just drew it with pencil onto some tracing paper and then cut it out. And yeah, this is just a really nice, light, kind of flowy, 
long bathrobe or dressing robe for kind of the warmer months. Um, but I just really love the color of this, and I think the pattern itself um, is actually really great. I liked how the collar was done, and I also like how it has some dropped shoulders and the nice big pockets. So yeah, that's that. Okay, I have just a couple more things to show you. I'm almost finished, I promise. Um, so I have one pair of shoes, which I have made myself. Just do a little close up. So these are some flats or um, sandals that are from the Shoe Camaraderie. And the Shoe Camaraderie is a company based in Australia that offers shoemaking kits. So they send you all of the materials and the instructions and then you make them yourselves at home which I think was just such a cool idea, um, and it's just something that I kind of wanted to try. So I ordered this kit, and this was kind of one of the more easy styles, just because I was a little bit intimidated. And it ended up actually working out pretty well. I was quite happy with how these turned out. Um, there's definitely a few mistakes. I got some glue in places that I shouldn't have, and there's definitely some gaps. Um, but overall, I think these are super cute, um, and it was definitely fun to try something new. Um, so if you're interested in trying something new, then definitely go and check out their site. They have a lot of styles that you can look at, um, and a lot of different colors to choose from. Um, so yeah, it's just something fun and new to try. And then finally, I have a couple of hats. Um, so this first one is the Elv or Elv Textiles bucket hat and I made this just out of some cotton canvas that I had sitting in my stash and this is such a cute pattern and I was so pleased with how this turned out. Um, when I showed it to Jason he thought that it was like a real hat which not to say it's not a real hat but like one that I had purchased. So yeah I think this one's super cute and I think I made this in the medium size and going back I definitely would have sized up. Um, I think I have quite a large head actually, um, so this one is a little bit tight, but yeah, it's just really cute for summer, you could throw it on at the beach um, just to keep the sun out of your face. And yeah, the pattern itself is really actually quite easy to make, and the end result is beautiful, so definitely would recommend this pattern. And then the last one to show you is this little knit um, toque or beanie. And this is a pearl Soho pattern, and I used some superwash merino wool from Yarn Canada in this kind of bright, limey, avocado green color. And this was my first time knitting on circular needles, so again, I got a lot of help from my mom on this pattern, but in the end, I think it actually worked out really well, and I enjoyed working on the circular needles for the most part until I got to the end and then had to use the double-pointed needles, which was very finicky and difficult. Um, but it all worked out in the end, and I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. I'm looking forward to wearing this in the cooler months for fall and winter. It's just a really cute, bright, kind of fun color that adds a little pop of color into your outfit. Okay, so that is it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you did, please don't forget to like this video and also subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. And also let me know down below if you do like the sewing content and what other things you'd like to see. I'm kind of thinking it would be good to do sort of a beginner sewing tips video, so sharing more about like the patterns that I started with and some like supplies that you need and tips that I found useful um, and things I've learned along the way over the past year of sewing and making all of these clothes. Um, I've also thought about doing kind of like individual technique videos, so showing you guys how to do a bias binding. Um, or how to do a French seam, or how to add inseam pockets. And I've also considered doing kind of sew-along videos, so a little bit more like kind of showing you the process of making a garment from start to finish. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about with that is showing you how a pattern is made if it's a paid pattern, because I think there might be some copyright issues with that, but I could always check with the pattern maker um, if they're available and see if they'd be okay with me doing that and showing you guys not the in-depth instructions but just kind of the general process and any adjustments I make and kind of a review at the end of what I think of the pattern. Um, so if any of that is interesting to you then definitely let me know in the comments below or if you have any other ideas I would definitely love to hear from you and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!